Brian Kidd to George Best. Fitzpatrick. Best going in on it. Best! Oh, beautifully taken by Best! What a magnificent goal by Best! I think he was one of the first players that ever wore a beard in the football field. And I remember a, an official of the club coming and saying, Mark, when are you going to get up for a pick off his beard? I says, look, if you can guarantee me that if he takes his beard off, he'll be a better player, he'll have it taken off tomorrow. So, uh, that was George. Aerial ball skills, well read by Fitzpatrick. Charlton taking over, best breaking, and in a great position to break too. This looks bad. What a great goal, George Best and referee John Gow clapping his hands together and saying, well done too. Players are losing this ball in the sun, but it was Best who picked up that kid flick. Driven wide. Yes! Charlton. Best! George Best made it look so easy doing a double shuffle that Muhammad Ali would have been very proud of. Best! Green off. Best. Nice dummy and shot, yes! Alas, the drop of the shoulder and the goal against Coventry was his last. In 1974, at the age of just 27, George drove away from Old Trafford for good. Meanwhile, another Belfast boy, barely 17, was being fast-tracked. I was absolutely, you know, gutted that I wasn't in the reserve side. Just told the report, 11 o'clock at Old Trafford, to travel to Main Road, not knowing I was going to actually play, until uh, Frank O'Farrell told me at 11 o'clock the next morning. It was just a shock and a surprise, and um, to be fair to the rest of the team, the likes of George Best and uh, Bobby Charton, I just didn't make any fuss at all, um, whether tea and toast, whatever, and just went to the game. Sam McElroy, a boy from Belfast, only three months past his 17th birthday, and getting his chance today because Dennis Law is unfit. Oh, I'll never forget it. Um, 63,000 people there when I ran out, I've never heard a roar like it in my life. McElroy to West. The crowd not liking it because they think that he got B booked. Kids cross, O'Neill, Best, and McElroy! No, the feeling I had then was, was marvellous. I could have actually ran out of the ground. And I felt that great. You know, 63,000, what a roar. And to score the first goal, tremendous. That run of Gowlings and the header from Law seem to have recharged their attack. And in fact, there was a foul there, or handball, I should say, in fact, by Beale, which is why United have got the free kick, to be taken by Charlton. Still lose McElroy. McElroy, the scorer. Sammy McElroy, 17 years of age, scored on his first division debut last week, and now he scores on his home debut. Richards trying to run through people and not succeeding. Charlton, a good ball for McElroy. McElroy's made himself some space. And he's got a great goal! <laughs> Jerry Daly. McElroy! <laughs> Coppell, oh, he's round his man. Good low ball, yeah!
Sammy had been an FA Cup winner in 1977 with United. Little did he know, as he took to the turf two years later, what a dramatic finale he was about to set up. Well, the United fans wanted him to get on with it, and that wasn't a very good ball by him. But here's Koppel, and there's McElroy getting in there. Can he finish it off? Yes, he can! Two goals in a minute, and suddenly United are back in it. What an amazing turnabout. And the scenes on the two benches, well, I've never heard. The despair on the face of Don Howe and uh, Terry Neal. But wait a moment, it's there by Sunderland! And they're back in the lead again, and they're off the bench once more. What an amazing cup final! Well, I thought it was extra time, definitely, anyway, and uh, we've came back so many times in yeah. the season to do this. I must have fancied with our chances, but then to go away and score a goal. Absolute no, sickener. No, no doubt about it, yeah, yeah, definitely. Sammy was concerned when Brian Robson came bristling in, but there'd be too many midfielders to perm from. There was a lot of speculation as to who was going to make way. There was Ray Wilkins going to make way, myself was going to make way. Um, so, you know, we went into that game wanting to do well, the both of us, and actually I scored a hat-trick, the um, first hat-trick for Manchester United, and we win five. Actually, Gary Burtle scored that day as well, so everything went well. Burtle's allowed to turn. Gallagher getting in the way of Wilkins' attempt to tread it back to Burtle's. And then presented here for McElroy again, who makes the most of it. shows that he is in charge and the free kick will be taken by McElroy who scores and that will lead surely to protests from Wolves Bertels, the touch was short and so much of Manchester United's work has been this afternoon and Sammy McElroy produces a hat-trick in superb style. Sammy's club and international colleague was Jimmy Nicholl, the fullback with a ferocious shot. Now Nicholl coming forward. And trying a shot, and it's a goal! Jimmy Nicholl, from all of 35 yards, took Corrigan absolutely by surprise. Hughes is forward. Highway running at Nickel. Fresh legs here, but Nickel stays with him well. Punched out. Nickel! Good looking across the far post. That's... Well, that was unbelievable. That very nearly was an equaliser. Tommy Hutchison floats this one deep to the far post. Gary Bailey under pressure, and on the line, Jimmy Nichol saves the situation. Right through and knocked away, and Nichol, what a goal, that fairly tore into the net. Mariner immediately coming back to get cover against the height of McQueen. And McQueen gets it nonetheless, there's a miss kick, Butcher still not clear, and Jimmy Nichol has made it 2-1 with his left foot. He was the best school I ever seen in my life. I never seen anybody better than him. I mean, he was a man when he was 13. I was very single-minded, very stubborn in my approach to the game, um, as you know. And even when I came across, um, I used to fly over on a Friday night, play for the juniors on a Saturday, and fly back home again on a Sunday. And I just had this single-mindedness and sort of tunnel vision of wanting to be a footballer, regardless of anybody next to him or what they were going to do. Norman's name was in the papers as most of his school pals were still delivering them. The youngest ever Manchester United player. But an interesting choice at substitute today, 16 years old Norman Whiteside, who will be in the FA Youth Cup final on Monday night against Watford, and who was discovered by Bob Bishop, the same Belfast scout who first spotted George Best. It was obviously Ron Atkinson put me in the United team at 16 and Billy Bingham to the World Cup shortly afterwards. So they had faith in me, but I also had, like I say, faith in my own ability. So I didn't really feel the pressure. 
I thought to myself, well, let them worry about me. You know, I mean, I, I didn't care who I played against. If it was Brazil or Liverpool or anyone, I just went out and played the non white side well. Some people liked it, some people didn't. What a fine finish! Robson, United finding room in which to manoeuvre in midfield. This is Muren, a beautifully delivered header for Whiteside. This one does count. But now Koppel, Whiteside far side, this is the best chance of the match and it's made to count. Looks for Whiteside, took it down beautifully, turned away from Hansen. Whiteside, what a fantastic goal by the 17-year-old. 12 minutes play. Augustin, all oh, Grimes oh. is onside, and so is Whiteside here. Oh, I say! It's amazing! It's absolutely fantastic what Whiteside has achieved. He's put Manchester United in front, only three weeks after scoring at Wembley in the Milk Cup final. Well, I always had the will to win, and I used to a door plan in the big stages and I have this picture in my head mentally and um, the night before any big game like that and a lot of the time these pictures came true sheer delight for Manchester United and Norman Whiteside the youngest player ever to score in an FA Cup final it's gone past Bracewell Whiteside's onside struck in the middle Olsen up as well That's incredible! How on earth did he get that past Southall? Well, from what I remember, when Alex arrived, I was injured the morning he first came in. And under Alex Ferguson, um, I had a lot of injuries. And it was hard to get over because it, there's nothing more depressing for a professional footballer to be injured for a long period of time. And obviously, you know, Alex knew I mean, what I was capable of, but my injuries didn't let me sort of come to the forefront. I wouldn't change anything. I've had ten glorious years and happy memories to look back over. Claire. It breaks for Robson. We've got a second bite at it. White side. Oh, they're flying in now. Alex Ferguson's fledglings also boasted a Belfast boy, Keith Gillespie. First thing it really came to my mind was there's so much pace. He could catch pigeons, a boy, you know, very quick, smart. I remember his team's winning 8-9-0, and, and, and he set up seven them. Keith Gillespie. And still. Oh! A goal of real class. Carrick Fergus, north of Belfast. Famous for its castle, its quiet coastline, and its balmy backing of United. Lily is uh, about 100 foot by 60 or there or thereabouts. She's, she's, she's more than a flag. She's, she's actually taken on the mantle of a, a personality. I mean, I meet people every match I go to, there's somebody said, where's Lily? Or even I'm what, in my own hometown, says, how's Lily doing? You know, we were lucky enough to get her into Wembley. Uh, we were coming in the turnstiles. Uh, one of the security guys said, you can only bring a flag the width of your arms in. We are throwing all sorts of lies and eventually he let us in with it. And uh, she came out during the cup final. And Barcelona, as you say, that was, I was very proud that Lily was there, but that night was just am amazing. Lily has even appeared at Madrid's training ground. The uh, top bosses in Madrid weren't too pleased with that because Anelka just returned from to, to train that day and uh, the press were more interested in Lily. But uh, it weighs a tongue because Keith doesn't like carrying it. I am no celebrity. Lily is a celebrity. And Lily, I may own Lily in the fact I got her made, but Lily belongs to Manchester United supporters, match going supporters. She's everybody's flag. She's a Manchester United flag. Keith's so obsessed by United he gets carried away. Ask Kino and Treble. 